Hey folks, welcome back to another Galaxy Z Fold 4 video. Today I'm going to explain the pro photography and pro video mode of this phone's camera. If you are watching my channel for the first time, please be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon. Alright, first of all, what's the pro mode? Well, the pro mode as its name suggests is a professional photography mode. If you are a beginner photographer looking forward to enhancing your photography and videography skills and also to unleash the real potential of Fold 4's camera, you should try its Pro Mode. So how do we access the Pro Mode? Well for that, open the camera app and go to more and click on the Pro option which is the first option in this list. Ok so this will look a little complex at first and may overwhelm you as well but don't worry, I will explain all of this in detail. First of all, I want you guys to go to the settings and tap picture formats. Turn on the raw copies, raw format will save your images in the maximum possible resolution and you will be able to customize these later on in the post processing. Now scroll down and turn on the grid lines as well. The tracking autofocus is a good option, it will keep tracking your selected subject even if it moves. So if you want to track something like that you can turn it on. I am not sure if it's going to work in the pro mode and the pro video mode. But we'll see that in a while. Back to the camera screen now and you can see that flash on the top. Keep it off as it will likely mess up your photos. Next up is the timer. You can set a timer up to 10 seconds. Next up is the aspect ratio for the photos. It is 3 to 4 by default and this is the best aspect ratio to capture your images because it will take images in the maximum resolution. If you take images in 9 is to 16 or 1 is to 1 or 5 is to 6, that's going to lower down the resolution. Metering is basically responsible for deciding what aperture and shutter speed will be used for a photo based on the amount of light your camera is exposed to. We have three metering options. The center weight metering. This uses the center of the frame to analyze and set the shutter and aperture. The matrix metering. This uses the entire frame and spot metering will use a spot picked up by you. And in the end we have the color composition toolkit. First of all we have the contrast. It will let you decide how you want the colors to look like. Lower it down and it will grey out the image. Increase it and it will add depth to the colors. It will make the colors pop more. Next up are the highlights. Highlights are responsible for managing the brightest areas in an image. If you want to lower down the two bright areas. Decrease the highlights and if you want to brighten up the brighter areas and objects, you can increase the highlights. Shadows are completely opposite to highlights. Shadows are responsible for managing the darker areas and darker objects in an image. If you want to lower down the darkness of a darker object, decrease the shadows and if you want to make the objects look darker, increase the shadows. Saturation is next and it determines the intensity of colors in an image. If you want to lower down the color intensity or if you want to decrease that reddish shade in an image, decrease the saturation and if you want to increase the color poppiness, increase saturation. And the last option here is the tint option. If you want to add a greenish tint to the image, decrease the tint and for a pinkish tint, increase the tint. Let's now take a look at the camera controls. Here we have the ISO, first of all ISO is your lens's sensitivity to light. It determines how much light you will have in a scene. If your environment has poor lighting or it's too dark, you can increase the ISO and go all the way up to 3200 on the Fold 4. If the environment is too bright, you can decrease the ISO all the way down to 50. Remember that a good ISO is between 100 and 500. If you use too high ISO all the time, your images will have a lot of noise. I will attach a little ISO chart here as well to give you guys a better idea. If you are unsure about the ISO, try using the auto ISO and learn from that instead. After this we have the shutter speed. This will let you choose for how long you want the shutter to remain open and let the light in. You can go all the way down to 1 by 12,000 and all the way up to 30 seconds. 1 by 12,000 means your shutter will remain open for a super short time. If you want to capture a fast moving subject. You can use a shutter speed of something like 1 by 1000 
and if you want to capture those light trails or starry nights you can use a shutter speed of 1 to 20 seconds like the iso chart i will also add a shutter chart here to give you guys a better idea and you can also use auto shutter speed if you are not getting its idea in the first go. Next up we have the exposure value. It's a combination of your shutter value and the F number. A higher EV value would mean that the camera will be exposed to more light and a low EV value will lower down the light exposure. Suppose that you are capturing on a bright day with good light and using 100 ISO. Your EV value should be between 0 and 100. You can adjust the EV value according to the scene in the frame or leave it to auto as well. And I will once again add a chart here to give you guys a better idea about the EV value as well. After this, we have the focus option. We have three options here, center, multi and the manual option. You can adjust the manual focus using this focus scale. Center focus will focus on the center and multi focus will focus on multiple spots in one frame. And the last option is the white balance. White balance is used to match the colors in a frame to the light source. For example, if you are shooting outdoor under broad sunlight and you want your camera to capture the same color tone as the source light, you would want the white balance to be somewhere around 5000 or 5500 Kelvins. If you are shooting under bright LEDs or fluorescent light, you would want the white balance to be around something like 4500 Kelvins. And if the environment has too warm color tone, like around the sunset, you can lower down the white balance to balance the colors. And if you are shooting in a too cold or bluish environment, increase the white balance. And we have the lens options here, ultra wide, wide and telephoto. Try to capture the images in wide mode only as these are the images that will have the best possible resolution in the raw format. That's all with the Pro Photo Mode, let's now take a look at the Pro Video Mode of the Fold 4. As I have already explained most of these options, explaining the Video Pro Mode would be much easier. I'll start with the resolution options again. Try to shoot your videos in 9 to 16 or 9 to 21. These are the only two options where you will have all the resolutions unlocked. Other aspect ratios will restrict your resolution to 1080p at 30 frames per second only. After this we have the color toolkit again and then we have the histogram option. Turn on the histogram to get a better idea of how your camera is seeing a particular scene and how it's detecting the colors. Now we have these LR bars. This is showing you the audio that's being detected by the mic of your phone. After this we have the ISO here once again that I explained a while ago. We have the shutter speed, exposure value, focus and white balance options too. All the guidelines that I explained for the pro mode photos, the same guidelines apply to the pro video mode as well. We have the mic options here, you can choose whether you want to record audio from all the directions via the omni mic feature, you want to record the rear sounds only or the front mic is your preference. You can also use a USB mic with your phone and you can use a bluetooth mic or the mic of your galaxy buds as well. The last option here is the zoom option. You can record pro mode videos using all three lenses including the ultra wide, wide and the telephoto modes. And that my friends is all with the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4's camera pro mode guide. I am assuming that you have a good understanding of all the options and now all you have to do is to experiment with different configurations in order to get a hang of it. You can literally take your photography to next level with that amazing camera on the Fold 4. If you have any questions or queries, feel free to ask me in the comments section below. If you think that I missed something in this video, mention that in the comments too so that you can help others as well. With that being said, I will sign off and see you all in the next one.